What's up everybody, Derek Anderson, the DA, and this is my review of The Lost City. Uh, it stars Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, Daniel Radcliffe, Divine Joy Randolph, and a very, very brief cameo by Brad Pitt. Okay, so what did I think about this movie? It's not good. It's not a good movie. Um, there's a lot that I could say about this movie, but I'm gonna keep this real short and sweet. Mainly, it's a waste of a good cast, and it has a very paper-thin script terrible narrative there's really nothing narratively to this story that's interesting at all uh they don't do very good character work um it's just like overall it's really just about hey if you like these characters if you like not even the characters if you like the actors and the actresses that are in this um and you enjoy like kind of light improv in for, in terms of your comedy um yeah then it can be enjoyable um other than that i mean there's really nothing else there the adventure there is no adventure it's just people wandering through a jungle there's a very thin plot about what the villain wants he's like oh i want to find this like ancient treasure because i have daddy doesn't love me issues okay um you know the protagonist who is sandra bullock um she doesn't have any agency she doesn't push the plot forward she doesn't do anything she just kind of lets things happen to her um and you know other people have to come and rescue her Shane Tatum's character who probably should be the protagonist isn't he's treated like an idiot um he's a cover model he's just kind of you know dismissed as a fool um so his character doesn't work very well for what he's supposed to be doing uh Brad Pitt's character is fine Brad Pitt actually works as far as the character is, is concerned but he's only there for five minutes um, and you know, his, his character is on the screen then he's off the screen. And after he leaves the, the movie completely falls apart. Um, I don't know if they, you know, this is like a screwball comedy. Um, it's an adventure. It's supposed to be romancing the stone. It's supposed to have that vibe to it, but it's not really even close. Romancing the stone is a classic adventure film romance, uh, works on every possible level. It's got great acting. It's got great comedic timing between Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Uh, Danny DeVito is even in that movie and he was great in it. Um, this movie had none of that. And, um, the sad part is, is that there was potential. There's a l little hints that, yeah, you could have did more with this particular film. And, you know, it seems like they just decided, eh, let's just go ahead and just quickly get through this, get it in the can, get it out to the audiences. We're probably going to make money because of the people that are in it. Um, so yeah, very disappointing film. Um, I think that, uh, it really starts with the script, the script. When you think about a romance comedy and an adventure you think about three genres one of those genres has to work you got to nail one of them okay uh comedy is about timing okay it's about the timing of the joke so you have a great actress like sandra bullock who's been in a ton of comedies she knows how to get her timing correct okay but what they seem like they did and maybe this is just me because i don't think any of this was scripted i think that was strictly improv and she was doing a lot of improv with channing tatum where they're just kind of talking back and forth and talking over each other and you know dropping little snide remarks and this that and i don't think that stuff worked at least as far as comedy is concerned for me now i know people are laughing about this this is getting rave reviews out there or at least uh, maybe not rave reviews but decent reviews but everybody sees it there's a problem in this movie and it's mostly with the way that they deliver the story and the timing of the comedy now the second part adventure there is no adventure like i said people wandering through a jungle nobody took the time with the script to kind of lay out a full three-act structure for an adventure it's just kind of like hey they they're here they show up on the island they escape they go on this little adventure to try to do something and then they get caught and it, you know it's the standard adventure but it's just so thin there's little very little for the actors in uh this film to do uh, the last part, of course, is the romance. Now, romance is just a matter of chemistry. You know, you can have two good actors. I like to think of it like uh, Jungle Cruise. The Jungle Cruise kind of has some of the same problems this film had in terms of comedy, in terms of the timing. The jokes are not always landing like they should. Uh, the adventure just being kind of haphazard and weird, although the adventure was done a little bit better in Jungle Cruise. But the key part was what made that film somewhat work was the chemistry between The Rock and Emily Blunt. They had great chemistry. This film, the two leads have chemistry, but it's not great chemistry. So when it comes to the romantic stuff, it's kind of like, 
I don't know if I buy it, you know? I don't know if I buy it. And that's a big problem when you have a romantic comedy adventure. One of those gotta work and none of them work in this film. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the scoreboard and I'll tell you what I think about this film overall. All right, The Lost City. Let's go ahead and take a look at these scores and it ain't gonna be pretty. First up, Direction. Now, um, this is directed by the Knee Brothers. I don't know anything about these guys. I've never seen their films before. The only thing I know is that they're directing the next He-Man and Masters of the Universe film. Um, and that has me very concerned. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that one's going to work out. Probably not for the best. Uh, but in this case, um, you know, it's a high concept movie, you know. A uh, romance novelist going off on an adventure with a, uh, you know, a cover model, you know, being kidnapped by a rich billionaire. High concept to the max, okay? You know, everybody likes those kind of films. If they're done correctly, you know, you can really have a hit on your hands. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know why, but this thing just doesn't work out at all. Like the story is, ter it's just so poorly written. Um, and the director has to step in there and say, hey, look, we need to give this thing a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that and what he ended up doing is just offering nothing but like hey we're just going to rely on our main stars these two uh great stars that we have just to kind of pull this thing across the finish line and it's just like come on you guys can't let them carry the entire film um in a jungle just yakking back and forth to each other it just didn't work unfortunately they just weren't thoughtful enough with this and then the set pieces like even if, with that being said you know if you execute the set pieces well enough you know okay you can get something going there they have a bit with the uh hummer uh they have another like kind of thing with the with the bikes with the motorcycles in the jungle which was an absolutely dumb idea um you know just overall just poor execution on those even like the little uh bit at the end where you have the temple and they find the thing they're looking for and everything it's just it's just poorly done so i'm gonna give direction a four all right, next up after that is the huge culprit of this entire fiasco, the script and the story. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, this should have been a uh, easy slam dunk because you have plenty of examples to go off of when it comes to this type of story. You know, when I was thinking about like, what could they do and like, what other kind of romantic adventures have we seen in the past that worked? You know, obviously Romance in the Stone came to mind. You know, you have The Mummy, like that's a more recent example. Uh, Jungle Cruise, like I thought said, was also good, but The Mummy to me, you know, you have Rick O'Donnell, you have um, Evie, I forgot her last name, but you got Evie and those two characters and the way that they go off on this little adventure and the way they fall in love and the chemistry all of that works and i know channing tatum's playing a different kind of a character because in his case he's really just an idiot you know he's not very you know smart and you know he doesn't he's not you know you can see even in this picture he has a little pillow around his neck i mean it's kind of silly you know but they just didn't do anything with this and they really left it to Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum to create like characters out of nothing. Like these guys have no characterization whatsoever. Um, and that's unfortunately, the stakes were 100% weak. This is like a stakeless movie. Like there's no stakes in this that I feel. There's no tension. You know, it's just like, they're just kind of like, eh, let's just go off on this adventure. Let's just see, figure out what we're gonna do. And then at the end of the day, well, you know, if we make it, we make it. It's like, that's what this thing feels like. It feels like there was no stakes involved. Uh, there was no reason to care about any of these characters. Um, the script gave nothing. The actors gave a lot, the script gave very little. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the script a two. All right, next up, acting. So um, the actors are doing their jobs, you know, and it's always hard to blame actors when you have poor direction um, and a really, really poor script. It's You can't really say they're phoning it in, you know? And Sandra Bullock, again, she's been in a ton of movies. Channing Tatum has been in a ton of movies. Brad Pitt, well, you know, he really wasn't a problem. Daniel Radcliffe has been in a ton of movies. So it's like, okay, you guys are professionals. You know what to do. So it's kind of hard to really blame them for the acting, you know, the performances. So 
some of the performances that they gave some of the you know back and forth the comedy the improv and everything like that some of that was all right you know it's not going to say it was all bad but it just didn't add anything to the film it was just kind of like levity in a moment it really didn't make the film funny it, that's the problem it's like this was a comedy and this was supposed to be funny and none of this stuff was funny ultimately this is just you know the the epitome of paycheck collecting paycheck collecting at its finest they showed up they did a yeoman's work they got paid and they got out of there hey let's do the press tours okay that's it and they'll put this thing on the back burner in their careers i'm quite sure but nevertheless decent enough you know i can't really complain so i'm gonna go ahead and give acting a six and then finally sights and sounds now the one thing i will say that i did like about this is that they actually shot it in a jungle they actually shot this movie in an actual jungle so you know this isn't like on a sound stage somewhere where they had to you know like kind of create this or whatever no this thing is a jungle it looks like a jungle they're climbing up cliffs they're running through dirt they're in water and lakes and all that kind of stuff like that and i'm like oh okay cool you know i think they shot this at the dominican or i think they shot this on the dominican republic uh the island of the dominican republic so it's like okay really good looking film film looks great uh, sound effects, all that kind of stuff. Eh, soundtrack was, you know, it's all right, you know, but like overall, I think that, you know, that's probably the most solid part about this film. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a seven. And then finally, we get to the last score. Now, I told you earlier in this year that Moonfall would not be the worst film that I would see, and it is not. The total score is a 4.5. Five. All right, so that's going to do it for my review of The Lost City. What did you think? Did you watch the movie? Did you think this movie was as bad as I've rated it? Did you like it? Trust me, it's getting like rave reviews all over the place. So I wouldn't be surprised if you thought the movie was a lot better than I thought. But I just didn't feel anything from this. You know, the script, especially the script, really let these uh, actors down. Maybe even to a certain extent, let the directors down. Uh, but we'll have to see how it all hangs out when it comes to the next project for all of these folks. All right, that'll do it for me. Thank you for watching. See you next time. All right, so there we go. The Lost City coming in at number 11, all the way down at the bottom. I didn't think that Moonfall was going to be the worst film that I saw, and I wasn't disappointed. Uh, this one is certainly worse than that. Um, and uh, I do have a review for Uma. Uh, I uh, have to put that together and get that out, but I do have that ready. So I did get a fi finally get a chance to see that. Have that one up soon. Um, so yeah, those are the rankings right now. Um, X safely on top at number one, followed by The Batman, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, The Cursed, and Death on the Nile. All right, so tell me what you think of the rankings. Um, you know, I have a feeling like in the coming weeks, we're gonna see some shifts because I'm hearing things Things about some of these other films that we're about to see uh, some of them are sounding pretty good some of them sounding not so good uh, but anyway thank you for uh, checking those ratings out and I'll see you next time <laughs>